This session is on benefits and risks in health research, the principles, types and categories. In this session, we will describe the concept of benefits of participation in research, risks of participation in research. We will state the values and principles that underlie the benefits and risks of health research and we will recognize types and degrees of benefits and risks to human research participants. Let us start by defining what is risk. Risk is a term that refers to the probability of a harm or an inconvenience happening due to participation in a research project. For example, if in a drug trial a participant takes a drug and has a side effect of the drug, that is the harm. What is the probability of that participant having that harm? That probability is the risk. Harm is actually the negative health consequence of participating in the research pro project and presence of a risk does not always imply presence of a harm because sometimes a risk may be there but the harm may never happen. After understanding what is risk, we should also understand what is benefit. Benefit refers to the favorable outcomes of participating in a research project. This favorable outcome may be to the participant or it may be to the community. The benefit is a combined probability. It is a combination of probability and magnitude of several favorable outcomes together in participating in research. For example, if by participating in a research, there is discovery of a new drug, this new drug prevents diabetes and this by prevention of diabetes it reduces morbidity. All of these probabilities of benefits cumulatively comprise the benefit of participation in the research project. Now what are the fundamental principles which underlie benefit risk assessment in a research project? The first and the most important principle is the principle of essentiality. This principle states that only that research project should be conducted which is absolutely essential. Trivial research projects which do not have much of social value, do not have much of scientific validity cannot and should not be conducted. This is the fundamental principle underlying benefit risk assessment. If only the most essential research project is con conducted and the non-essential and the trivial research projects are weeded out, then definitely the risks are reduced and the benefits are maximized. The second principle also known as primum non nocere is non-maleficence that is do no harm. Any research endeavor, any procedure that is being researched should not predominantly cause harm to the participant. So that non-maleficence is a fundamental principle underlying this assessment of risks and benefits. Because if the risks outweigh the benefits, then it is a research endeavor which causes harm and it should be avoided. Then there is the principle of beneficence. That is any research endeavor should be targeted at providing benefit to a larger community and to the participant. It should not be something which is just done for academic purposes. There should be a social value, there should be a beneficence that occurs as part of the research project. Then comes the principle of professional competence. This principle states that only those people are eligible to conduct research who are competent to carry out that research project. So they have to be qualified in research methods, they have to be qualified in that area on which the research is being carried out. For example, if it is a diabetes related research project, they have to have qualifications in treatment of diabetes. So only competent professionals should be responsible for carrying out research projects and this ensures that benefits and risks are, benefits are maximized and risks are minimized. And finally, the most uh, this is one ethical principle which underlies common, it, it rise, uh, runs across several uh, aspects of research ethics that is the principle of transparency and accountability. 
in order for risks and benefits to be balanced and benefits to be maximized and risks to be minimized, the entire research project has to be transparent and the researcher should act in a spirit of accountability towards the safety, the welfare and the benefits of the research participant. If that is ensured, then risks and benefit balance will happen. So, these five or six principles are the underlying principles behind risk and benefit assessment in a research project. Now, let us look at the various types of risks and let us just discuss the various types of risks of participating in a research project with examples. First and foremost is the physical risk that is bodily harm or physical, physiological, biological harms that can happen due to participating in a research project. A typical example is adverse events following uh, administration of a drug in a drug trial or when uh, during the process of collecting blood sample for a study, uh, bruising or excess bleeding or pain or uh, syncopal attacks, all these can be biological or physical risks that can happen as part of participating in a research project. Then there can be psychological risks. For example, there can be emotional harms. Um, one typical example is uh, in, in, in uh, qualitative research studies of emotional situations where participants either have recently suffered uh, the loss of a near and dear one or a mother who has delivered a stillborn baby. If a research is done on this participant, it is likely that all their painful memories may be rekindled and they may be subject to emotional harm, they may be subject to emotional suffering that is psychological risk. Then there can be social and cultural risks. For example, if there is a research project on say tuberculosis in a community, as we know tuberculosis is a stigmatizing illness. Uh, there is a huge risk of the participant being identified as somebody with tuberculosis and being discriminated or stigmatized in the community. So, this is a typical example of a social or cultural risk. Then there can be economic risks. For example, if a patient, a participant who is part of a study undergoes a disability or they, they suffer an adverse event and disability and because of this disability they are unable to carry out their livelihood then they may have financial burden, they may undergo eco economical risks. This is the extreme form of economical risks. There can also be minor economical risks as in the cost incurred in travelling to the research site or the study site. If it is not reimbursed, then that, that can be a minor small economic risk. And finally, there are also legal risks. There are risks of violence, there are risks of criminal uh, prosecution as being part of a research project. For example, in a research project of uh, uh, say HIV transmission among men who have sex with men, there could be a chance that legal aspects may be involved. So, types of risks, there are various types of risks and any research project, any given research project may contain one or several more of these risks. So, the research project, the ethics committee who is evaluating the research project has to systematically look for physical risks, psychological risks, social risks and cultural risks, economic and legal risks in any given research project. In the next uh, few minutes, we will talk about risk categorization. This is an aspect of understanding the burden of risk that is carried in any given research project. There are four broad categories of risks. The first is called less than minimal risk. That is, this uh, group of studies which are categorized as studies with less than minimal risks, there is almost no harm which is anticipated by participating in this research. Typical examples of these category of research are uh, retrospective data analysis from secondary data, then anonymized uh, samples and anonymized data used for analysis. These are all research projects which fall under less than minimal risks. That is practically no harms are anticipated. Then you have the category of minimal risks. 
these are those research projects where the risk is not greater th than what is encountered in normal life. So, a person who is a healthy human being who is living a normal life themselves will have certain risks inherent in their lives. So, this category are those research projects which involve only this minimal risk which any normal human being has. For example, questionnaire based research projects, surveys that are conducted at household levels, non-invasive testing like urine sample or hair sampling etcetera or imaging studies like x-rays, ultrasound scans etcetera. All these contain minimal risks uh, which any normal human being will have and so they are categorized as research projects with minimal risks. Then you have research projects with minor increase over minimal risk that is these are all the uh, research projects which actually have risks and they are further categorized into those which have low risk and those which have high risk. So, this category is minor increase over minimal risks where the risk is greater than what is involved in normal life. So, it is not just the risks of what a normal life individual will have, but it is greater than that. So, some examples for this are research on vulnerable participants, because the same minimal risk category research when it is carried out on a vulnerable participant, the risk becomes a minor increase over the minimal risk and other uh, invasive uh, other minimally invasive procedures like blood testing or uh, certain research which, which is associated with stigmatization, psychological risks etcetera, they are all categorized as low risk research that is minor increase over minimal risk research. Then the final category which is high risk research which is more than minimal risk which is substantially greater risk than what you can call as minimal risk, these are high risk research projects. For example, drug trials where there is involvement of intake of a medicinal substance where there could be inherent adverse events or those tests which involve invasive testing or procedures like biopsy all these are categorized as high risk studies or more than minimal risk studies. These are the broad risk categorization of various research projects and the ethics committee has to look at the research proposal and categorize the research proposal into these uh, categories. Often times it may not be possible to fit the research project into one of these vertical silos. There may be overlaps, but broadly these categories have to be borne in mind while doing a benefit risk analysis. So, quickly summarizing the fundamental principles behind benefit risk analysis. Risks in health research refer to the probability and magnitude of harm that can happen as a result of participating in the research and benefits in health research are the probability and magnitude of collective benefits, not just benefit of the research intervention, but benefits uh, of participating in the research, benefits of the research being present in that area, all this together comprises benefits. Then the ethical principles of beneficence, non-maleficence are the predominant principles which underlie benefit risk analysis and there are several types of risks which we saw like physical risks, psychological risks, socio-cultural risks, economic risks and legal risks and the risks can broadly be categorized into four types that is less than minimal risks, then minimal risks and then risks which are slightly more than minimal and substantially more than minimal risks. So, these are the broad categories of risks and it is the responsibility of an ethical committee to look at the presence of these categories of risks consciously in the research project and categorize the research project into the grade of risk that is involved in the research activity. These are some references which are important to read to understand the principles behind risk benefit analysis. Thank you.